Thanks everyone. Well, at 6.30, I think we'll get started. Can I welcome everyone this evening to this meeting of the Winchester Town Forum, which is taking place in the Walton Suite in the Winchester Guild Hall. The time is, what, 6.31 now. My name is Councillor Kathleen Becker, Chairperson of this committee. Can I please advise, advise that this meeting is being audio recorded and live streamed from the Council's website. In addition, a video recording will be uploaded to the Council's YouTube channel after the meeting. Can I remind officers joining virtually to turn off their cameras and mute their microphones until they're invited to speak? Can I also remind members to speak clearly and remember to use your microphone? And can everyone please make sure that mobile phones are either switched off or turned to silent? We have the apologies for this evening, Claire. It looks like we have quite a few. Thank you, thank you Chair. Um, I've received apologies for abstinence from um, councillors. We're Todd and Tippett Cooper. Thank you. Thank you. The first item of business tonight is in Councillor Crafts. I've not received from Councillor Crafts, but I can note that too. Thank you. Um, first item of this. Oh. Well, carry on. Uh, first item of business is a rather safe one. It's, we are required to appoint a new vice chair, the safe person of our lovely friend um, and fellow councillor Lynn Murphy. So I'd like to call for nominations. Councillor Green. I'd like to propose uh, councillor Chris Edwards. Thank you very much. Do you have a seconder? Pretty much everyone. <laughs> Pretty much everyone. Congratulations, councillor Edwards. Thank you. <laughs> Just let Councillor Edwards move, move seats. The next item of business uh, disclosures of interest. Does anyone have an interest they need to declare tonight? Um, then we move quickly on to Chair's announcements and I just wanted us to take a minute to remember that today is, um, is Holocaust Remembrance Day, so just to remember all of those killed in, in the Holocaust and other atrocities throughout the world, Rwanda, Darfur, Cambodia, Rwanda, um, just <laughs> we recently became a city of sanctuary and it's important to remember that those are the types of incidents that people are fleeing. So thank you. So moving on, the minutes of the last meeting, can those be agreed? Agreed. Councillor Cresk. Thank you, Chair. Um, just one comment on page 18, if I may. Um, referring to discussion on civil contributions. Um, the paper speaks to the discussion on those civil contributions and where they were coming from and talk about the strategic use of them. My notes speak to a, uh, a request for a breakdown of where those contributions were coming from across the district, oh, sorry, across the town. Um, just for a bit of perspective, what I'm looking at is Winchester is subject to development, hence the silk contributions, and the silk contributions are increasing. And uh, I'm keen to understand and analyse where that development is taking place. Um, it would be useful to have that for today because I think there's a lot of talk about spending steel on North Walls. I want to make sure that we've got sufficient cycling and walking routes across the town to get to North Walls, plus other infrastructure needs that might be required. Um, so those were my notes. I don't, maybe they, maybe I was unclear, um, but that, I think that would have been useful for today, today's meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Can we record that and make sure that that breakdown is provided um, as soon as possible? Yes. Thanks. Other than that, can those minutes be agreed? Yes. So we move then on to public participation. I have two speakers registered to speak um, now and a Mr Wright to speak later on in relation to a uh, proposal for St Giles Hill. Is that correct? You're, you're here? 
Thank you. So we'll start with Mr. Bethel and then move to Mrs. Beck, please. Thank you, Jen. My name is uh, James Batho, and I'm campaigning for Safer Streets for Winchester. I am here this evening to ask for your support to two linked campaigns to reduce traffic speeds in Winchester. Following the presentation of the Winchester County Forum last year, there was considerable support from representatives for a default 20 mile an hour speed limit. At a Hampshire County Council meeting in November, November 2021, the Council asked the Executive Lead Member of Economy, Transport and Environment to consider whether 20 mile an hour speed limits, where communities want them, should be encouraged. He also expressed his view that will be good for pedestrian and cyclists and thereby encourage more active travel. In his response, the Executive Lead Member acknowledged that there have been significant changes that we are going through. The world is changing and committed to undertake a review of the HCC policy towards 20 mile an hour. The review group was set up this morning and I know that Councillor Todd is part of that group. Councils, sorry, other counties such as Oxfordshire and Lancashire in England have agreed 20 mile an hour for every settlement as are counties throughout Wales. Scotland has promised to offer 20 mile an hour widely and places like Warrington have 20 mile an hour in all of their satellite villages. Demonstrating widespread local community support is critical to securing Hampshire County Council's agreement to implement 20 mile an hour widely. So, as a campaigner for a default 20 mile an hour limit, my first request is that Winchester Town Forum pass the motion calling on Hampshire County Council to implement 20 mile an hour in Winchester and will write Hampshire County Council to request that the County A makes 20 mile an hour the default speed limit on streets throughout Hampshire in places where people live, work, shop, play or learn, leaving 30 mile an hour with the exception on these roads where full consideration of the needs of vulnerable road users allows a high limit and allocates a ring fenced amount from Hampshire County Council and Environment, Transport and Economy, Capital Programme and Revenue Budgets to enable 20 mile an hour to be implemented county-wide within five years. I restarted the Community Speedwatch Programme in Winchester District last year. Since then, we have regularly monitored traffic speeds in and around the city. Our monitoring has identified that there is a significant difference in the awareness of motorists to 20 mile an hour speed limits. There is an increased level of vehicles above the speed limit compared to those in 30 or 40 mile an hour areas. Motorists will stop and ask for clarification of the speed limits. When told it is 20 mile an hour, they complain that the signs are not obvious and the painted markings on the road have faded. In which is the road signs at the entrance of the 20 mile speed limits and no obvious reminders for the intervening distance. So as a campaigner for reduced speeds, my second request is that the Worcester Town Forum will write to Hampshire County Council to request that they consider placing signs at all road entry points to Winchester, making it clear to motorists that there are 20 mile an hour speed limits in the town and repeat these at the entry to the central area. That the county repaints all repeater signage on the roads where a 20 mile an hour speed limit is enforced. I'm looking to engage and work with the Town Forum to get momentum for change. Does the Town Forum agree that support for the default speed limit of 20 mile an hour would help to improve the lives of the public? And does it support the call to increase awareness of these to provide safer streets for Winchester? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we just, in the interest of transparency, Ms. Beth and I have spoken before this meeting and we have checked as to whether or not we can accept a motion at this meeting and officers have advised that we need to double check because it, it's not entirely clear. So I don't think we can agree to the motion today, but we can certainly debate the matters contained within it and, and come back to you um, in due course. But I would like to invite debate or comment on Mr. Bethos suggestions. Councillor Scott. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, raises some really good points. Uh, and I think for some time, as we all represent city wards, that we've noticed an, an increase in speed. And so thank you for coming up with volunteers again. I remember the clock of you on Stanwell Lane That's and, right. and, uh, and something like that. So great job you're doing. Um, I think added to, if we could do a motion, I think we could give it an intent of, of what we feel as city councillors. I think that there is a, a definite speed in this and concur with that. I do think that sometimes even the road signage that we have in some of our wards are knocked over. Uh, so when we can increase the signage from Hampshire County Council, what it could do is also straighten up some of the signage that's already there, is, uh, uh, particularly in, in, in Stonewall, which uh, is represented by Councillor Green and myself. It, it's shambolic, some of the signage we have. 
I'd also add, I think maybe the, the spirit of goodwill to add to your comments on speaking is, is some of the pathways we were talking about walking and cycling and so forth is not in good states around some of our estates and some of the road surfacing as well. So if you're relative to be a keen cyclist around some of our city walls, you, you really have not got some good road surfaces to cycle on. Uh, a respectable driving on as well and so forth like that. So I do think that there, there's maybe somewhere we need some consideration as a form. We need to take some, some subjects so speeding, uh, signage, road um, conditions and path conditions and stuff. I think we need to probably maybe bring a paper to and see if we need to have some liaison with the county council like we do with extra bus services that we've done over the years to tell forth. And, and, and maybe have uh, a representation from the county council to come and speak like we've done on buses and something like that. Perhaps then we can question them and then we can have a debate in, in, in their presence. Thanks. Thank you. Those are very sensible suggestions. Councillor Radcliffe. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Just to add my support and thanks, uh, Mr. Batho and your team do terrific work with Speedwatch. Uh, out on the side of the road in the rain, uh, clocking, speeding motorists, and it's thankless work, but it's really important work. So thank you for all you do. Uh, and just to say, from my perspective, having last year spent quite a bit of time trekking uh, around the streets, knocking on doors in St Michael, uh, speeding traffic in those narrow inner city streets was one of the top two or three issues that were constantly raised. So I know that residents in my ward would very much welcome uh, a full 20 mile an hour limit, which would go some way to reducing confusion about what the speed limit is in any given street. Uh, that and repainting the, the road uh, signage, the reminders of actually on the road, which have completely faded now, I think will go a long way towards this. My final question is just, you know, I think there is a lot of support for 20. Uh, I understand that the County Council was until recently quite resistant, but that there may now be a new opening uh, and that the County is ready to look again. Uh, presumably there will be resource issues. So uh, I'd quite like to understand how we can make this happen, because it's one thing for us to pass motions or have a discussion here, but it would be good to actually uh, this time see progress on the ground. Thank you. And as um, Ms. Fatho said, Councillor Todd has been appointed as of this afternoon a member of that group for the County Council, so I'm sure he will be flying the flag for the 20 mile throughout throughout the city. Councillor Ferguson. Um, thank you, Chair. And um, thank you, Mr. Batso, for bringing this to us again and highlighting it. Um, as a City Councillor, I've actually been to the Speedwatch training and um, had the pleasure of being out on Stunning Lane um, in the rain last week. And what astounded me is it wasn't just that people weren't aware of the speed limit, but for some people who were, they weren't just going a little bit over the speed limit. There was one car doing almost 40 in a 20 mile an hour zone. And that's a room where people cross the road to get to Stanwell Primary School. And in fact, there was a young mum who stopped to say, could you do the speed watch? when all the mums are trying to cross the road. So speed is a problem. Um, I know that when I talk to residents in St. Bartholomew Ward, they often say to me, the reason we don't walk with the kids, with the buggy, the small ones holding their hands, is because of the speed of people on the roads we are worried about crossing the road. So they get in the car because they think it's safer. So I think there's actually quite a lot of appetite for that 21 speed limit in the town. Um, there is some talk about whether or not you can enforce it. Often people say even if you introduced it, the police wouldn't enforce it. But in other cities where they do have 20 miles an hour, there is that group kind of mentality. People adhere to the, what the majority of people are doing. So it's gradually as more and more people went more slowly, Fewer and fewer, fewer people would actually speak because they would be the ones, the outliers, the upper ones, it would be really more obvious. Um, it is a question of putting pressure on the county. It isn't something within the town forum's gift. However, it is something where the town forum, I feel, could be the voice for our residents who we know would actually like to see something done on this 
So thank you very much, Mr. Bradley, for bringing it to us again. And thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Green. Uh, Chair, I've been um, going on with the Council for a long time now about getting road markings to be uh, really, uh, put back on the roads properly. I mean, for uh, Councillor Ferguson, she said it's down one day. I mean, Battery Hill is another one in Arbor. They come down there at 40, 50 mile an hour. Um, I actually stood out on the road the other week and told this guy as he came past me, that he had to slow down because I wouldn't move. But I said, it's 20 and all I got was told to go away, basically. And then the, the hand came out the window with a little gesture of his finger, you know? So people just don't take any notes of it. I mean, I think quite honestly, and I know it's not going to be popular, but the only way we're going to stop this is put more, more uh, humps, humps down the road, to be honest, and make them bigger than what they are. I mean, the Wimmel humps, you'll know, they slow them down quite well. These stand on ones, they're parted, they're all broken up. People just don't take any notice of them now. I mean, you can get a car over, you get wheels either side of the humps going down stand on um, some parts of it. So people aren't going to slow down, are they? But um, so I've been on about it for a long time. But, um, it would be nice, actually, or interesting, actually, if Mr. Parker could tell us uh, the update of the success rate at the moment of what we're catching. Um, sorry, Chair, is that okay? Um, yeah, of course. Uh, yes, Councillor. Um, it depends on the, uh, the sort of areas that we uh, are actually doing monitoring in. Um, and just to reinforce, the um, monitoring we do is actually an educational process. We, as uh, private citizens, are assisting the police. All we can do is monitor and report back to them. So in no way are we catching anybody. Uh, we are only able to report back to the police. Um, we are finding that uh, in the 20 areas, and that's why I brought the second aspect of this question to the uh, the, 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 the council, the, the forum, um, is uh, that there is significant um, numbers that we find either on North Walls or High Street or on Stanmore Lane, all of which are 20 mile an hour zones. Um, they're the, um, the sort of um, the people who are sort of exceeding the speed limit is anything between 20 and 50 percent of the traffic we actually see going past. That compares to other streets which are 30 or 40 where it will be probably less than um, 10 percent. Um, we have to understand that obviously as being in the sort of on the side with our high vis jackets it does make a difference to the actual speed of traffic it's quite significant the actual impact you have just of standing there uh, and actually monitoring the traffic but yes the the, the 20 mile an hour limits you know sort of uh, um, are areas where we think that there are you know sort of quite a, quite a, a, a misunderstanding from the motorists of the fact that um, they are in that area um, and that, that contributes to the, uh, the, the, the excess speeds. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Wiesbert. Thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, I, I again also um, congratulate and thank you, uh, Mr. Bradley, for bringing this to uh, the uh, town forum this evening. Um, I, I look at this with two hats on. One is as a ward councillor, and uh, I have been active over the last uh, many months reporting things like the worn out road. Uh, signs, 20 mile an hour signs, no entry signs, there's no end of white paint that is missing off our roads around here. So there's a very real problem, something that uh, you know, should be passed straight back to the county that the maintenance in those areas is not done. Um, so as a war councillor, I'm very aware of what's going on. I have a lot of schools in my area as well. And I see the issues with the school traffic and the, the children and getting into the schools with the speed and, and the volume of the traffic. I also chair the uh, Winchester uh, Walking uh, Strategy Group. And that group um, is um, currently providing feedback into the uh, Winchester Movement Strategy and the local walking, cycling walking infrastructure plan. One of the strong messages we are giving in our feedback is that the, uh, there should be, and we want to see a, a 20 mile an hour vehicle speed limit across the entire city area, 
exactly the way that you've explained that when you come into the city, the expectation is that you will do 20 miles an hour maximum in this city, um, and less there are reasons to, for otherwise with signage. To, uh, I'd like to see that uh, 14 as part of this. Um, well, I also work closely with the Winchester, uh, cycle Winchester and uh, the two methods of transport uh, are closely related. I would like to see active travel um, more widely used across the city with lower car journeys. Part of that is reducing speed. Um, we've got many footpaths in the city. There are very few cycleways. The footpaths are severed by roads. So you want to get to the school, or your children want to get to school. It's uh, usual that you have to cross one of the arterial roads. There's insufficient crossings and so on. So it's, it's not just the 20 mile an hour that I'm advocating here. It's a broader set of infrastructure that allows walking, cycling, active travel across this city uh, to be done more safely and uh, to be used by more people and uh, vehicles are discouraged from using the city but where they are in the city they're restrained to a much lower speed level. Thank you. Thank you. We have Councillor Verney and then Councillor Grace, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, my son does actually uh, live along North Walls and moved in before the change from 30 to 20. And actually, while there may be a significant number of people still speeding, there was a significant drop in the, a noticeable drop in the speed of traffic down there with the switch from 30 to 20. So I think the argument that, well, people are, people are speeding, so the speed limit's wrong, um, isn't actually reflected in the experience um, of people in those 20 mile an hour zones. Now, that doesn't mean we shouldn't be looking at more enforcement, but I, I do agree that once everybody gets used to the idea that 20 miles an hour is the speed at which you drive around town, it will become a lot easier to pick out the outliers and enforce it. Um, certainly um, in our ward over the past few years, we've had a number of accidents involving um, children and adults. Um, and while you couldn't particularly say that speed um, was a cause of those accidents, it certainly um, is a factor in how serious those accidents end up being. Um, it's also the case that um, people might say, well, we can have more crossings. Well, not only are crossings are quite expensive, but the experience, certainly in my ward, is that those accidents happen in random places along the main roads. People cross in all kinds of points. And we just need to make the whole system safer, not concentrate on particular hot spots, if you like, with very expensive engineering. It's paint and signs and the will to do it. So I do really think that 20 miles an hour is the way to go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Quest. Thanks, Joe. I'll keep it brief. Um, but the residents I represent wouldn't forgive me if I didn't support this completely and wholeheartedly. Um, it's what people talk about most of the time. Um, there's three schools in the ward um, and cars drive far too fast. Um, I think the only other thing that I would add that, that, is, that is additive is there's certainly, as an example, um, a lot of concern around the planned closure of Vandover Road and an understanding of how you transition from high speeds on the A272, how you now transitions down, and how that would transition down to a 20 mile an hour zone. Um, so wholeheartedly support 20 mile an hour. It's what people are looking for. It's what people live in which are looking for. Um, absolutely. How do we transition, particularly on the outlying areas, from high speed roads into low speed roads needs some attention, and I think urgent attention, particularly with the planned closure land over road. Um, I guess the, the only other thing I would add is that I think we've had some very good success with Hampshire County Council um, to get a pedestrian crossing in on the end over road, um, and that came up through resident pressure, through a petition to Hampshire County Council. Um, so that may, may be something to, to think about as well. Thank you, Chair. 
Thank you very much. And thank you, Mr. Matthew, for coming along tonight. I think it's very clear that we are all incredibly supportive of, of the idea of 20 miles an hour throughout the, the city area. I've stood with you on Hyde Street and we've had people come out and say thank you very much for doing this because it's people do speed along here and it is unsafe. And as someone with two young children, including one still in a buggy, it's frightening to cross the road with with both of them. So and the speed is a, is a big factor in that it's much easier to cross a road and safer to cross a road where cars are going slower. So we are very supportive um, and we'll see what we can do in terms of response. I'm sure Councillor Todd, uh, it's a pity he's not here tonight, will be, will be wave, as I say, wave, waving the flag with the, with the county, but we will see what we can do in terms of writing to them as well. Thank you very much for coming along tonight. Mrs Beck, did you want to present now? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm Emma Beck, I'm speaking on behalf of the Winchester Sports Art and Leisure Trust. Chair, I wanted to follow up on the discussion about multi-use games areas or muggers at November's town forum. At that meeting, I highlighted the lack of muggers in the town area, particularly from city centre northwards, and urged the forum to correct this deficit using the 15-minute city principle. Since then, the Hampshire Chronicle has undertaken research of its own, finding that Winchester compares poorly with other areas of Hampshire. For example, their recent article noted that Andover has nine muggers, all managed by Test Valley Barrier Council. I was grateful in November for the support of comments of forum members, one of whom even proposed a town mugger strategy. In practice, all that's needed is for the council to add muggers to the player improvement plan and related web page, so they appear alongside equipped play areas and skate parks. And then, of course, for two new muggers to be constructed, thin identified gaps in the Hyde and Abbott's garden area and in week. But having too few muggers is a symptom of a wider problem which is the lack of planning to meet the needs of Winchester's young people. All the more baffling given our city is home to five secondary schools, one of the country's largest sixth form colleges, and two universities with another higher education institution, Sparshot College, just a few miles to the north. It's good to see the council now considering housing needs for those in their 20s and 30s, but facilities for children and youth are still lacking. When I moved to Winchester in 2001 and gave birth to my second child, I remember reading about the plans for Silver Hill, mooted to include an ice rink and turn from bowling. More than 20 years later, my kids are now adults, and Winchester still has no ice rink or turn from bowling, no go-karting, crazy golf or trampoline park, and as many have pointed out, no affordable cinema. But it's not just about leisure facilities. Youth services are struggling too. Groups that serve the city's adolescents saw them disengaged during COVID-19 lockdowns. Many, particularly those from low income households, have not returned, and those that have were experiencing significant mental health and wellbeing challenges. But the area's Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service has waiting lists of well over a year, and other critical health services have been cut. For example, the City Sexual Health Clinic, vital for adolescents and young people, now only opens on a Wednesday. Other pressing matters affecting the city's young people include academic pressures, job anxiety, drugs and alcohol and antisocial behaviour as noted in another paper before the forum tonight. In short, the issues are complex and growing and it's high time we tackle them. I therefore come to the forum tonight to ask you not for a mother strategy, but for an adolescent and youth strategy for the city. Sure, some of the issues I've highlighted are not for the council to address directly, but many of them are. And in any case, joined up thinking and planning are urgently needed. Relevant community organisations are ready to work with you, and the city's young people must be engaged in any strategy process, of course. But town forum leadership is needed to make change happen, so I very much hope this is a challenge you'll take up. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any comments or response? Let's see, lots of hands going up. I'm not sure who was first. I'm. I think the post there, Councillor Scott. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think there is a tendency to see young people as a problem, whereas actually they're, they're an asset to our community who um, need to be welcomed into that community. And I think far too often they're actually excluded from it. And I think it's really important that we start including them to a greater extent than we have done in our decision making. 
going forward. I mean, sometimes that's because of their hard, we treat them as hard to reach. Actually, they're not hard to reach, um, but what they won't do is necessarily come forward when we're when we're consulting on things in particular ways, and um, we need to look at how we better how we better deal with that. Um, I think actually the issue of young people is wider than just the town forum, and um, I think we might want actually one of the um, scrutiny um, committees to to have a one of our policy committees to have a look at this as a broader piece of work, because I don't think this is just about Winchester Town; it's about the whole district. Uh, but I, I fully agree that we need to do more. Um, and one of the things that we really need to think about is around those affordable options for young people. I mean, quite often young people hang about because they don't have much money in their pocket and there are many options. Um, and, you know, it is cheaper actually to get on the train and go down to Eastleigh to the cinema there than it is to go to the cinema in Winchester. And that is an issue and it is a problem. Um, I'm not sure that's in particular is an issue that we can actually we can actually tackle but what we can look to do is to provide those affordable activities for young people and certainly um, you know free sports facilities you know like mugger like the ability to as we've talked about recently to be make it easier to sit your feet in the river with your friends and those kind of things are an important aspect of that thank you Thank you. Um, Councillor Scott, I think you were you, you were next. Thank you, Chair. Uh, and again, thanks for coming to the Town Forum and, and presenting. Um, obviously, Stanmore has a mugger and some good facilities that are there for young people. We are very um, rich, rich that we've got two big recreation parks, uh, one recreation park with an outside gym and a good skate park and a good zero to 12. And the Carroll Centre, which used to be a very good singing and dancing youth facility. Note that the youth has been taken out of the Carroll Centre, and that used to be the Carroll Youth Centre. So um, I think it, it, it's sad to know that where in the 80s and 90s, and I used to be a youth worker in Stanford in the 80s and 90s, I've gone too grey hair to be a youth worker now. Uh, um, that the facilities and the housing youth service used to pour in lots of money into all our communities uh, that we represent. And uh, alongside the youth workers, we used to have community development workers as well. Again, another uh, asset that we used to have as, uh, as communities, which seemed to have long gone. And when you've got it right in communities, when you've got community development workers and you've got youth workers active, then facilities also are not too far away because the community workers will be saying and the youth workers will be saying we need more of this and we haven't got this but they've got it over there we could have it over here as a community and so people like that um, or sometimes shared resources because we have Shanae and White used to bring resources out to places like Stanmore, uh, which would benefit. We used to go canoeing down uh, by Tunbridge as well, which was a good asset for young people to do. And they used to come back to the county centre and have a good old shower as well, because it always got dirty in those rivers down there. We alluded to some of the discussions last uh, time we met about young people will go rivers swimming, they'll do things themselves. Young people would still do and children will still do things themselves. Sometimes to a lesser point now because we um, are not always deemed into a safe society like we used to be when we were in there's always to be out all day long and the mum would say come back five o'clock when you do this on the table. Uh, the young people probably don't do what we would do years ago and build camps and stuff like that and put together a, a, a sort of a go-kart and all that sort of stuff. Um, but Saying that, I think there's 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 got to be a change of tact how we then start putting the professionals back in to some of our communities. And hand in hand with that, and let's get out today in Stanmore, looking towards the directorship over here, the director's offices, with a Stanmore plan and framework is nearly out today, and probably we're out today with it. Plan and framework is out of date because that's the year after us. You can't beat a master plan for areas and communities such as we lead and represent. And that has all facets of what, how, and what is needed housing needs, facility needs, access needs, 
speaking needs, uh, signage and so forth like that, and something for children and young people uh, and facilities, what's lacking. So I've, I'm pleased that sometimes the council, us the council, not just a town board, will actually really look at what's needed to upgrade some of our plan and framework documents. And, and that's good consultation again with our communities and that will bring it forward. And if it needs again, dialogue with the county council and saying, we need an investment in youth services again, or is it about time we brought community development workers back to the city, then maybe that's again another dialogue we need to have with the county. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Thompson. Oh, uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'd, I'd like to thank Emma for coming along tonight and um, addressing us um, about um, the concerns and, and the need to um, have more mothers within the, the city, as well as uh, providing facilities for um, uh, young people. Um, probably, I'm, I'm guessing you're talking around the 10 to sort of 14, 15 age group where there's, there's really not a lot, I, I, I agree. Um, I wasn't at the last town forum, um, unfortunately, in November, um, as I wasn't well, so I obviously didn't, uh, I wasn't around for that discussion. Um, but I, I completely agree with what Councillor Learning has said in terms of consultation. We really do need to involve young people and certainly that age group um, in, our, in any consultation that, that um, we carry out. So we do know their views and we do know um, we can then provide or look to provide the sort of facilities that they are, they are after. Um, as Councillor Scott said, um, you know, um, things are very different from when we were all young <laughs> and, and the things that we did uh, then aren't really the same uh, for youngsters today. Um, and I think it is really important that we do try to look to provide um, um, sort of cheap facilities as well um, or free facilities for, for that age group. Um, and as, as Councillor Lynn said, um, you know, the reason why a lot of children are just sort of hanging around is because they've really got nowhere to go and, and, and nothing to do. So um, I, I fully support what um, what you said, um, Emma, and um, I think we do need to look into this and just be much, much clearer in, in the way that we carry out our uh, consultation so that we do involve young people and we know what they want. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Ferguson. <clears throat> and thank you, Chair, and um, again, thank you Spec, for bringing this to us. Um, I was expecting mothers, but this is mother plus. <laughs> um, plus plus. Um, I was out talking to residents in Winnell this afternoon, and one of the things that came up on the doorsteps was they said to me, we're really worried there isn't enough for young people in the age bracket exactly the councillor Thompson talks to. In fact, they were saying how wonderful the parks are that the town hall provides, particularly the one on Royal Manor Road. Um, but they were saying that there's an age group where that park doesn't have enough. And then young people in Wirral, some of them, not all of them, some of them council learning, do then go and look for mischief or something to do because they don't know what to do. Um, and I know that Street Reach have done a lot of good work with the youth in Winnell, um, trying to find other options to use their energy and their free time. And in fact, the Town Forum Small Grants team actually gave Street Reach a small grant because they were setting up drop-in kickabouts. Because what they found is that young people would go to those drop-in kickabouts just literally providing nets and balls was enough. It was something that was missing. And um, I do think that while we know we represent the town, it is a bigger issue. Um, and um, I, I do think that possibly Councillor Lenny is right. Maybe it should come to Health and Environment Policy Committee. Um, and we do need to involve um, uh, Councillor Clear, the Cabinet Member, for wellbeing. 
going to in this discussion to look at it across the board. Um, I would say though that we talk about engagement with young people. One of the things I liked about the vision work we did, uh, the vision for Winchester, is that young people did get involved in that consultation and they told us loud and clear that there weren't enough facilities. And they also told us loud and clear that they wanted facilities where they could hang out, that hang out safely, and facilities where, you know, they didn't have to spend a lot of money sitting in expensive coffee shops. And that's why the work around the public realm when we come to do the Central Winchester Regeneration is going to be so, so important. Um, I feel that there, you know, there, there definitely um, is a need and we do, we do need do need to look at this. For my own children, we went through the teenage years here. North Wall's recreation ground was a bonus. That's where we used to go and meet up with friends. Um, and I hope they picked up their litter. Not necessarily sure they did, um, but that's where they hung out. And if you go to North Wall's in the summer, there are many, many groups of teenage children just enjoying the park. But we do need more for them. Um, so thank you very much for bringing this to us and thank you for making it mother of consequence. <laughs> sorry, thank you, Councillor Ferguson and oops, sorry, Councillor Radcliffe, for you are sneaking on in front of me. <laughs> thank you, Chair. And yeah, it's just a, a quick one. I mean, I, thank you for um, to Ms. Beck for bringing uh, such a big, important issue forward to us. Uh, slightly frustrating because the issue is so big and what we can do about it is so limited. Uh, obviously, we're talking about the consequences now of more than a decade of austerity where a lot of services have been under huge pressure for, for some time. Uh, you know, I know even my own experience with the sun here, especially needs uh, how uh, much under pressure the CAMS services, child and adolescent mental health services, uh, and also how uh, the youth support services and the youth clubs and the youth groups that used to be operated every weekend uh, no longer operate every weekend because they no longer have the funding from the county council due to uh, central government grant cuts. Um, so we have to look at the, what we can do as a city council, as in this case as a town forum, to help pick up the pieces and plug some of those gaps. I was really encouraged when we had the discussion uh, last year about our strategy for playgrounds that we uh, seem to have moved on from, it will, or at least we were recognising uh, the, the different groups of children who were not being catered to, including uh, girls and children with special needs and older children. But obviously there's that, also that group beyond which the playground you know, is now of less interest. So I just wanted to, if I may, throw in one cheeky question for Councillor Lurley. Uh, because like many of you, I've been receiving emails today uh, on the back of the front page story in the Hampshire Chronicle. Uh, there is real community concern that one of the facilities that we do have in the town area, which is the skate park, uh, Pat River Park, is under threat. And I understand uh, that the discussions are still ongoing and that the matter is now sensitive with the cabinet decision. Uh, still pending with the University of Southampton, but I think it would be useful if we could have some reassurance that that facility, which is uh, really valued by many young people uh, in Winchester, is going to be protected in future. Thank you. Councillor Looney. I'm, I'm very, very happy to take that question, actually, um, because I, I am pleased to, to be able to reassure people that the, the future of us Gate Park in Central Winchester um, is uh, assured. Uh, there are no plans to move the existing skate park at the current time. Uh, the university are very keen to incorporate um, the skate park into uh, what they think they're thinking um, about their expansion plans for that site, um, and indeed um, thinking about uh, how it can be made better. So not just around maintaining it, but how it can be made better. Um, I would also like to add that in terms of skate park, we are making progress on new skate park um, for um, Winnell. We've had, that is one where we've had a lot of contributions from younger people. Although again, the issue was around girls, um, how, we, how we get them to participate more in those conversations. 
particularly because we know that those kind of smaller skate parks are often where girls feel more comfortable rather than in the bigger ones which would attract the you know the kind of older boys and things so there is a, a real commitment to having a really good skating offer in Winchester uh, although one of the things there is you know I used to um, skateboard very badly when I was younger I have to say I never got the hang of turning around at the top of the jumps the skateboard always went way up in the air and god knows where it landed um, but you know, I do appreciate that, that the requirements for these kind of sports do change over time. The old wooden ramps that we had before um, uh, are definitely, you know, not enough now. We're now we're now moving on, and undoubtedly in the future we'll move on further. Currently, there's a lot of requests for what's called a pump track, uh, which is. Um, another kind of sports facility that, that young people really want, which is around tar, you know, tarmac areas for scooters and bikes, and, you know, all kinds of things. So the what young people want will change over time, and we need to be flexible about being able to to cater for that as we go forward. But the university have made a very clear commitment that if we do grant them a lease on that site, then the skate park will be part of their plans. I think you'll know that's music to our ears as well, Councillor. <laughs> <laughs> um, unless there's anything. Oh, Councillor Cress. Thanks, Joan. I'll, I'll keep it additive, um, but I want to thank Emma as well for coming along and returning to this question around buggers. Um, and the reference, I think in particular to the 15 minute city, uh, which came out of the vision of Winchester, as well as the teenage girl, the teenage girls' design group. Um, and I sh should confess, I've got a couple of teenage girls um, who can support the, the, uh, the trips to Eastleigh Cinema and uh, perhaps allegedly even Riverside as well. Um, but I think the 15 minute city is interesting because, you know, kids in, in in Hairstock, in, in, in the north of Winchester, are not going to walk down in, in, to the north walls necessarily after school. Um, they're going to look for something within 15 minutes. Um, and I think when the conversation last forum meeting, um, I think I was told we've got a basketball hoop in St Matthew's Field. Uh, I did try that out with some residents kind of knowing what the answer was going to be and I was told eh, you know if you go there it's a, it is literally a basketball hoop with a, a, as much tarmac as you can bounce a ball on and then grass there's no there's no barrier around it so you know it's impossible to actually make good use of it and I was giving short shift as to what they thought of that as a uh, as their facility in the wards north of the city for Teenagers, a basketball group. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, and thank you again to the, to Emma for coming along again tonight. This is an area that I keep raising in various fora as well. So I'm very pleased to have you coming coming along tonight. This is something we do. We do consult quite well with younger children when we do the play areas. We go out to school. So maybe this is something we need to start doing with the older children going to the secondary schools and talking to them about what facilities they would like. But that, as Councillor Looney has said, this is probably something we need to consider on a district wide basis. So I, I recommend that we do refer it to I think Councillor Ferguson is the chair of the Health and Environment Policy Committee. So you will be seeing a lot of each other, I expect. But thank you again for coming along tonight. It's always really helpful to have a So that moves us to the first formal item of business tonight, the Winchester Town Forum Account Budget for 2022-2023. Um, which is to be recommended to Cabinet. Mr Kennedy, you're in the room and you're not last today. <laughs> not, are you introducing this paper? Or perhaps we're really... um, yes, yes, I'm introducing. Um, thank you very much, Chair. Um, yeah, so you have the paper you have in front of you. Um, 
is the final paper of the budget setting process for 22-23. Town um, account informal um, accounts group meeting um, have met and have proposed recommendations um, within this paper for the budget for 22-23. Um, that will obviously go on the process um, to Cabinet and Council for final approval. Um, and also, we'll be looking for a recommendation of a town preset to be set for 22-23 as well. Um, so moving into the key points within the paper. Um, In terms of changes um, and bids that have been put forward um, within this budget paper, um, there is um, another paper on the agenda looking at um, the tennis courts, um, and that's the, the revenue costs of that um, subject to approval of that paper are reflected within the financial projections here. Um, and assuming that is all recommended, is all approved as recommended. Um, that would increase the revenue budget by £9,000 per annum from 23-24. Um, and also more significantly, um, a growth bid has been proposed um, of £50,000 per annum um, under 1.3. Um, and that is covering recreation grounds and open spaces areas. Um, providing additional budget um, for follow-on work from the vision for Winchester 2030 um, and also looking at um, additional maintenance provision within the town area as well. Um, essentially that is that is a £50,000 budget per annum from 22-23. Um, obviously proposals will come forward against that. Um, but it would mean that the budget would be available for immediate use um, as soon as proposals come forward against that. And moving on to the town precept, so it has been confirmed um, that the council overall, including the district and town, is able to increase its precept uh, within the referendum limits by a maximum of five pounds combined. And that would equate to, if the, if the town district both increased by the same amount, that would equate to an increase of about 3%. Um, the council tax base for 22-23 um, has had a small reduction um, from 21-22. There have been above, above average increases um, for the last few years, um, but essentially it's the forecast for the year ahead. Um, the forecast that was made in the previous year um, in terms of development for the town area, um, not all of that has come forward um, and projections are lower for 22-23 and so therefore there has been a small reduction to the council tax base for 22-23, um, meaning that within the, in the projections within Appendix A that has an impact of about £18,000 per annum. Um, in terms of the projections in Appendix A again, um, a council tax preset increase of 4.5% has been um, assumed within those projections. Um, obviously, that would be subject to a motion and um, recommendation to Cabinet and Council um, tonight in terms of what that actually is. Um, a 4.5% increase is £3.30. And we take the town preset to £76.71 in total, brand D equivalent. Um, moving into the community infrastructure levy section, um, again referencing um, the paper, another paper on the agenda, um, which will be subject to consideration, um, but to flag a bid for £99,000 of funding relating to fencing and flood lighting improvements at North Walls um, and so therefore that that bid is referenced um, within this paper. And finally just to note the reserves position, um, reserves opening balance for 21-22 of £404,000 
um, that does reduce um, over the projection period um, and dips, dips below the 10% strategy in 24-25. Um, but certainly in terms of looking over the next few years, um, the recommendations are all within that strategy. Um, there may well be additional requirements coming forward. Um, but the growth rate of £50,000 certainly um, provides some flexibility in the, in the near term to deal with some of those urgent requirements. Happy to take questions. Thank you very much. Do we have questions for Mr Kennedy? Apparently not. Uh, is there any debate? Oh, Councillor Looney. Uh, thank you. If I can add a bit to what Mr Kennedy has said as a, a, a member of the, the group that's been looking at this. Um, I think one of the things that's been very clear to us is that we do lack capacity within, within the town account to do a lot of the things we'd like to do. Um, we've come to the conclusion that we do need um, an increase of around the four and a half percent over the next year just to deal with immediate pressures um, and going forward we will need to think about how we how we can bring more money into the town. Um, I think there's always a tendency to focus on the headline figures so four and a half percent that seems quite chunky um, but we need to remember that currently inflation is running at above five percent um, and ultimately that will take it big chunk of that money out and the other thing we need to think about is actually what's happened over time. Um, currently uh, the town precept is at £73.41. Now over 10 years that was an increase of less than 20%. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we're short of funds now and if we look at if we look at the market towns elsewhere in the district uh, last year, Bishop's Waltham, uh, the, um, their parish charge was £169, nearly £100 more per annum than we're charging residents in the town. Now, that's why they're in a much better position to look after their parks and other facilities uh, than we are in Winchester. And I think it's really important that we recognise that. Similarly, Denmead, £164.73, New Walsford, £138.80. So significantly more than we're charging town residents. Now, obviously, we do have some economies of scale, but I think we do have to recognise the pressures we have. Uh, we've heard today from Mrs Back around uh, the needs of young people and how we need to be doing more for them. Um, particularly if we're looking for uh, things we're not going to be able to charge them lots of money for, then uh, we will have to think about how we fund that. A mugger, for example, will cost about £100,000. Um, ballpark, um, so that is the kind of expense that we need to be budgeting for going forward. We know we've got very ambitious plans for North Walls Park um, and we'd like to do more in the rest of the town as well, coming back to that 15 minute city that was mentioned to make sure that all people have access to good quality uh, local open spaces and recreation facilities within easy reach of where they live. So um, we are recommending an in a significant increase in order to um, fund some of, some of those improvements and to fund some of the vision work we do anticipate um, further pressures um, coming down the line, uh, but we think this is a, a sensible start for us starting to make inroads into those local needs that we can see in the town. Thank you. Thank you. And just to put it in pounds and pence, it's an increase of three pounds thirty, I think, a year. So we're talking about the the cost of a coffee and a coffee and a bun. It's not. It's not a, if that. It's depending, depending on where you go. Yes. I think there's some places you can't even buy a coffee for that. I was thinking more bricks. <laughs> um, I think we had Councillor Presk first, and then Councillor Scott, and then Councillor Ferguson. 
Yeah, thank you, Chair. Just a question um, in terms of the recommendations about a baseline revenue budget growth of 50k to provide initial budget that facilitate any initial elements of the vision and the neighbour baseline improvements to the maintenance of open space facilities. Um, there's two items there with one number. Is there a is there a, a split? Is there a, an amount that's imagined for the baseline improvements? I'm wondering how much is going to be spent on open space and how much is going to be left for, for the broader vision objectives. Uh, there isn't a split because uh, when we were looking at it, a lot of the kind of things we can look at doing in the in the short term will end up being open space funding. So it's not so much an either or as thinking about it as a Venn diagram uh, situation, and we're not we're not sure of quite where the balance is going to lie on the on the various things. Uh, so we need to give ourselves the space to be able to look at exactly how that will work. Um, but what we didn't want to do was um, spend six months um, talking about exactly what we're going to do, and then it, it end up being another 18 months before we actually do anything at all. Councillor Scott. Thank you, Chair. I think we've got to remember what, why we came about as a town forum, because we were unparished areas. And that's what brought us together as a town forum many years ago. And to what we do and how we serve the public in the town wards and in the town itself, we should be pleased with ourselves, to be honest, because we, we're probably over and above what a normal parish council does in, in terms of how they look after their immediate parish. We have lots of commitments, you know, we, we've got the cemeteries, we, we put contribution to the neighbourhood services offices in town. Even we've got the nighttime bus that we should be proud of. We've got the plant and play uh, rotation of maintenance over uh, years, a big number of years. And Sue Lord is not here to advance, but uh, yeah. Sue Croco, take, take her back to Sue Lord. She does a external job. When you actually think about the cycle of money uh, that Darren must pay checks out towards that particular section. Um, you must have sleepless nights because an awful lot of money goes into the furniture or play areas. And not to mention that we're seeing the pavilions going into North Waters and to King George V. So as a town forward, we really should sometimes, I know we can do more and sometimes more is expected and so forth like that. But if you actually analyse actually what we do, because don't forget we're set up supposedly like a parish council, we should be very pleased moving forward. As we're still functioning. I believe all these years going on since we've been set up. We're functioning OK. Thank you, Councillor Scott. Uh, Councillor Ferguson. Um, yes, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, thank you, Mr Kennedy. I'm also on the um, town accounts group. Um, and I know one of the frustrations to answer Councillor Kraft's um, question partly uh, was the vision for Winchester was that there were lots of ideas, but we, we just didn't have any budget allocated to put those into action. And, and very much this growth budget, if the point is that if the money is there, then when something comes forward, we can actually make it happen. Um, so I'm really supportive of that increase. Um, I was also talking to um, one of the other district councillors. Um, in one of the parish wards, and they were telling me that the intention there is to increase their precept by 18% this year. So while 4.5% is slightly more than the town form would normally raise, um, it really is quite small as well, but it would give us that flexibility. And as you say, um, <laughs> Councillor um, Chair, sorry, that um, you know, it is as much as uh, a cup of coffee but it does depend where you go. If you go to lunch uh, at Unit 12 and when on it doesn't cost quite that much, you'll get a bun as well uh, that much. But even though it is a small amount, we should still be cognizant of the fact that there are many of our residents in the town who, because of the cost of living crisis, the energy prices going up, national insurance contributions, this is still an increase. So while we're proud of what we've achieved, and thank you, Councillor Scott, for you know, going through all of those things, um, we have to make sure that we deliver for our residents. 
and we have to make sure that we link this budget to actionable things that we'll be able to point to and say, this is what we did with your money. These are the things you asked us for, and this is what we did. So you know, that, that's what we're trying to do. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Is there any further debate on this? No? If not, move to the recommendations. Back. Here we go. That um, we consider the budget for 2022-23. We agree a baseline with a new budget growth of £50,000 to provide an initial budget to facilitate the initial elements of the vision for Winchester. We consider the council tax precept for the town area that we wish to recommend to Cabinet, and we make these recommendations to Cabinet on the budget to be set for the town area for 2022-2023. Are those agreed? From Councillor Looney. Chairman, I think I think uh, I should move um, in recommendation three uh, that we uh, recommend to Cabinet um, an increase in the precept of 4.5% because I think Mr Basin may concern that I think we need to be explicit. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Is Councillor Grace. Sorry, Chair, just going to check um, if this paper includes an agreement around the, fund, around the funding of SIL um, on page 17 um, in regards to the fencing and flood lighting. That's the next item on the agenda, so we've not talked about that yet. Um, it, I've down Maple Stone, this my understanding is, is that it. It does, but clearly, if we don't agree that, then that still will still be there. It's only noting um, that that's coming forward, and that's the next paper is asking for approval of that. So therefore, it will just be removed. It won't be recommended to cabinet if that's not approved. Very good. I think I see the numbers in the in the accounts, but. Uh... You're right, if, if we don't agree the next paper, then we can revisit. So, thank you. And we are only making a recommendation at this stage, so we can. There is scope for that to be amended when it comes to Cabinet. So, those agreed with the with the correction from Councillor Looney, the slight amendment to recommendation three. Is that agreed? Agreed. 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 So thank you, as always, Mr Kennedy, for your lovely clear papers that make people like me who can't read spreadsheets particularly well understand the numbers. So thank you very much. So the, the next paper tonight um, relates to, as Councillor Chris alluded to, the proposed upgrades to the artificial turf pitch at North Walls. Um, who's here to present? We've got lots of Sue's and <laughs> lots of Sue's and Andy, and I think Mr. Rogers is also available on the line if necessary. So welcome all. Who is going to present initially? Mrs. Croker. Thank you very much, Chair. We also have uh, Graham Todd online as well. Lovely. Sorry. Hello, Mr. Todd. So before you is a report which follows the briefing notes that came to Town Forum in November last year. You will see that it makes three recommendations in relation to fencing for the artificial training pitch at North Walls, the flood lighting at the artificial training pitch and the tennis courts, and then the resurf resurfacing works of the tennis courts. I wasn't going to go into detail the report because hopefully it's explanatory um, what's in there, but I would want to get, bring an update to members tonight to say that since this report has been published, we've had to make the unfortunate decision to stop all games played after sundown on the ATP itself. This is because we were receiving so many problems with the lights that were regularly going out and we couldn't guarantee play. It was then also impacting on the tennis courts themselves. So consequently, we are looking to resolve the lighting issue at the earliest possible time we can, assuming that uh, approval is given tonight and those recommendations are carried. That's all I was going to say. Thank you. Thank you. 
Oh, Councillor Scott, first question. So just pick up a in on, on that, on the options there, uh, where we got off um, 12.1 on page 22, going into page 22 on option 2, 3. This is Croker. What will be the leading thoughts on that, if that's what you've decided on the astroturf flooding? And the other thing is, uh, obviously, you, you mentioned in the paper as well, under the future improvements, and thank you for that. Um, course one and two, and course three and four are, are in need of resurfacing and something like that. Um, and obviously, you mentioned in the fencing and the flooding as well, um, the floodlights as well, which see. So that's an immediate um, issue. Um, I also wanted to sort of ask a question, and it's there and I couldn't find it. Um, what is the life of the astral turf surface well, we don't even know that. Um, we'll come to that in a minute, if that's okay. Sorry, I wasn't quite sure about the question about option one. Are you saying that... No, but what options are you leaving us to? So you've got three options there in your paper. You've got option one, leave it as. You've got no. option two and three. Which which one are we actually going to be focusing on? Okay, you think okay. you about an immediate, we need the floodlines and done ASAP. What, what are you, which option are you leaving us for? Do you see what I mean? Yes, none, none of the options in 12 is what we're recommending. Those are, are options that were considered, but were rejected. So the option we're bringing forward is the request for the funding to deliver the works that are required now at the UTP and the tennis courts. So that's the option we, we we're bringing to you. Um, as regards the lifestyle, I don't know if Graham is able to answer that question. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Todd, did you hear that? What is the lifespan of the artificial? Pitch. The uh, that's the I can't answer the question regarding the pitch surface. Uh, in terms of the long life, we, we would do between 10 to 10 years. Sorry, your connection is a little bit um, in and out. So 10 to 15 years, that was for the lighting. You couldn't give an answer on the pitch? No, I don't believe that's been surveyed recently. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't answer that one. Councillor Scott. It's only the question, obviously, because I'm a King's Governor as well. We've obviously got an national turf up in King's. And we always put something away for a rainy day to resurface it. And we always look at probably on a 10 year cycle of looking, not saying that we will resurface it, but just to look and see what the condition is like after the last time it was relayed. So I don't know if you know the, the last cycle or like a 10 year maintenance look at it. Uh, it's serviced once a month and we get a report monthly, but um, I don't recall it being uh, resurfaced in the last five years that I'm aware of. Yeah. Councillor uh, Yeah, if anybody else has got any questions, I just wanted to, to, to make a couple of points about the paper. Are there any further questions? Councillor Ferguson. Um, thank you, Chair. I, I just had uh, one question, Mr. Croker. I just wondered, is there any um, funding, grant funding available for um, the upgrading of transports, municipal transports? Um, I know there was government money apparently for uh, tennis courts in the most deprived areas. We, we struggle in Winchester to meet that criteria. Um, but I wonder, you know, is there any funding out there for sports facilities that perhaps we haven't tried to access yet? Thank you. Thank you. Um, no, not that I'm aware of at the moment. Um, the issue, as you say, is that they, they go to those areas most deprived, and um, the central Winchester was, was not one of those sort of areas that would probably meet that criteria. We're very keen to get on with this work and make it happen because of the impact it's having on users. So certainly things like the lighting and the fencing we need to resolve quickly. We will always be looking for uh, additional funding for the management of tennis courts, ATP and anything else that we do. So when it does become available, if it's appropriate, we will certainly look for it. Thank you. Councillor Scott. Thank you, Chair. Um, any further questions or do we move to debate? Oh, Councillor Thompson. It's for debate, actually. Yeah. We'll start with Councillor Mooney and then Councillor Thompson. Um, thank you. Yes, I was actually going to try and preempt a potential question from Councillor Crask. 
Um, which, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, clearly, we've got um, essentially three proposals here. Um, one is around the lighting. Uh, this is certainly an urgent matter, um, as we've heard. Uh, currently, the pitch can't be played on in the evenings. Um, and certainly, I've received emails about that um, with a great deal of concern because, you know, for a lot of people, it is their major form of physical activity. Um, yeah. So I think I think that is really essential that we do that. The issue with fencing has come back to us several times around um, young people gaining access to the pitch, um, causing damage, leaving litter, you know, and again, that's a problem for our regular paying users of the pitch. Um, and I really think that we should we should be doing that. The reason it's proposed that um, those are done through sales because we see both of those as being actual improvements. It's not just it's not just around maintenance, although actually we can spend town sale on looking after things. There's more um, flexibility uh, with the town portion of the sale than there is with the district. So, uh, but in terms of when we look at the resurfacing of the tennis courts, that is clearly straightforward maintenance and should really be being dealt with through our normal expenditure. I think Councillor Scott made a, a useful comment earlier on about uh, the approach of schools with their artificial pitches, uh, where essentially they have a sinking fund. Now, we do have a, a town reserve, which is held at around the 10% level, but I think we do need to consider the town's asset management going forward with these facilities, particularly if we are going to build more muggers, which again is something that needs, you know, regular refreshing over the years and those kind of issues. So that is something going forward. Uh, however, the proposal here is that it is paid for essentially over a number of years through um, internal borrowing from the rest of the council. Um, the SIL uh, proposal, um, while it does obviously impact on the amount of town still available, um, it's not significant in terms of the overall sum. It still leaves sufficient for um, any projects that we've got currently proposed for to be spent through town still. But obviously we are anticipating a number of demands coming forward. Um, what I would say though about, about that town still is that we really do need um, People to come forward with projects in their own in their own wards. Um, I'm pleased to be able to say that the um, the work at the Wheat Community Centre is finally progressing. So for our own ward, we do have a project which where we encourage them to come forward with that, and that is now happening. But where you do have things that you want you want to see done, then. Um, I would encourage people to get to get together with their local neighbourhood groups, you know, and think about bringing those bids, those bids forward. Um, so obviously an impact on the amount is still available, but we don't think that that's going to be a significant problem going forward. But um, certainly my view is in terms of um, a lot of the criticism we've been getting about not looking after our facilities. These are important facilities in a very prominent part of the town. Um, I also think it's a it's a sign of our commitment to the North Walls Park itself to get on and, and do some of these things. Um, and finally, we have declared a climate emergency. And it is about time that we got some LED lights in, which will um, cost cost us a lot less to run as well. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lilly. I have to admit, I was horrified when I saw the actual tonnage of CO2 caused by the current lighting. Absolutely shocking. So the sooner we can get those in, the better. Um, Councillor Thompson. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Lilly said most of what I was going to say, but I really welcome this paper. I too know that the floodlights have been a real problem 
and certainly have been copied into all the emails um, of complaints that have been um, flooding in about the, um, the state of the lights or the lack of lights and the inability to then use the, um, uh, the area. Uh, so really, really um, support the recommendations in this paper. Um, as Councillor Lenny said, it's a really important part of town and we really ought to be showing that, um, the way forward in terms of, you know, we've got a great plan for the North Wales Park plan and we really need to make sure that we um, keep our investment in, um, in the North Wales and that area. Um, you know, up, up to scratch. So I thoroughly support these recommendations. <laughs> thank you. Councillor Scott. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, definitely support this paper coming forward. I've spent many an evening down there. Didn't like the cold, cold winter months down there. Um, I liked it when it was a more sunny evening. You didn't really need the floodlight on a sunny day. But um, spent many a time uh, on, on the thought pitch there. So it's a great facility. Sad that the evening lot can't use it at the moment with the flood um, light an issue. So as quickly as we can resolve that, uh, that's music to my ears, uh, Mrs. Quirker. Um, I do think uh, there is a sense sometimes moving forward uh, and uh, um, maybe the online officers also can uh, listen up to this, that uh, we do sometimes with these assets, we need to sometimes think of the rainy day because these are quite expensive to resurface and uh, replenish. Uh, but sometimes we need to actually have a little pot where we put away uh, like the schools do. And we need to learn that lesson because somewhere down the line, the AstroTurf will need replacing as much as now we know that um, four tennis courts need replacing as well, because we need to make sure that uh, they're fit for purpose and fit for people to have great evenings, great afternoons and, and mornings, whatever they do. Um, but great facilities. I uh, was reassured from uh, Andy last time when he presented uh, this paper to us about the key code um, and, and the way, because obviously now we haven't got the leisure centre staff managing, so I'm assuming if it's going to nod to me that the key code is still working okay, thumbs up there, so that's good, because I was still concerned because it's a, an isolated facility, the AstroTurf, the tennis course is fine because they've got the tennis club there. Uh, and we heard last time that the tennis club didn't really want to take responsibility of AstroTurf. So I'm still concerned moving forward that uh, it, it, what is the best solution. But if it's working, uh, don't fix it, I suppose, at the moment. But it, obviously the ideal was when we had the leisure centre next door that they looked after it. Now, I don't know, and I don't want to put Kelsey on the spot here, but if, if and when uh, negotiation and discussions go with uh, Southampton University about what happens in North Wales, etc. Uh, and we mentioned about the skate park uh, not being taken away and the parts of those discussions and the indoor bowls and whatever, perhaps a consideration of um, the management of the AstroTurf per se, because I haven't, that's not really uh, other than the key code, it's not being managed uh, and maintained in that respect um, like the old staff would do. The old life guys would come out and lock it up and whatever. Perhaps that could be a consideration moving forward. Um, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Lurie, did you want to come back on that? Or, uh, no, certainly the, in the intention is that the um, town will retain management of those facilities um, going forward, but certainly we could think about alternative ways of managing it going um, further on from that. But I, I would say that ownership remains firmly within the City Council. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Chris. Thank you, Chair. Um, I appreciate Councillor Lurley's preempting of my question. Um, and I welcome that very much. And in terms of broader spend on SIL, um, if you wouldn't mind, Chair, I'd like to come back to that as well when giving a report out in terms of the planning for the future of the town group later on. Um, but just in terms of, of debate, or perhaps question in terms of, it's a question to myself, in terms of, you know, I feel like we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. You know, we've got a dilapidated, dangerous facility that does need to be upgraded. Um, I don't feel any, I don't feel we've got any choice around that. Um, 
not comfortable for me that we've got, you know, we're spending a good amount of money on two facilities in North Walls, which are not open to all, which are not, which, which are restricted by sport or by funding in, you know, in terms of the need to pay for access. You know, we're going to have this big fenced off area that people are going to have to pay for. Um, the other thing we're spending on is, is the cricket group. So I'm just questioning to myself is are we providing what people are looking for? Going back to our earlier question, um, you know, there's reference here to illegal access into the I assume it's the sport, uh, the, the, the football pitch. And I think Councillor Tippett Cooper last time spoke about his experience of talking to the boys that gained illegal access. And they're, they're boys, you know, they're, they're just looking for somewhere to play football. Um, and we don't provide that. And I think I feel more comfortable supporting this spend on this kind of restricted access facilities we're creating. If we also had a strategy, I think, to this back's point around Mugger Plus, if we could have a strategy around that, that, I'd feel more comfortable with that. So we could actually say, look, we're spending money here. And you know what, we've not forgotten other people. We're going to spend money in these other places too. We just need to do some work to figure out what it is we're going to do. I'd feel more comfortable with that. And maybe that's a question, if that's something we could do or if others share that same sentiment. Thank you. Thank you. I just would add that the, the use of the provision of muggers is an item for the town forum and will be coming forward in future meetings. It is an item that officers are have been asked to, to look at. So it is something that is underway. Sorry, Councillor Ferguson. Um, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, one of the things uh, around both of these two um, facilities that we have um, is that I remember asking uh, Mr Moore to provide us with some analysis on the town groups of who was using those facilities and where they were coming from. And I think you, you, you told us, I remember seeing something in the store where you were saying, actually it's people coming from across the town, because often particularly the um, football pitch is used by businesses or for um, small leagues, which bring teams from across across the town. So even though it's a position in North Falls, these facilities are very much town facilities that everyone uses. Um, again, I know my own children would often be able to book a tennis court because they were in that age bracket again, but too big for a park, but they were too young to go to the pub. <laughs> Makes them sound there were other things they could do. Um, and but they could book a tennis court a, a, a town forum, you know, one of the town providers for actually not very much money. Um, and they could go and play tennis for an hour. They could walk there, they could play tennis for an hour, they were out of mischief, come home, want to be fed again, um, and they would be fine. And I, I don't know whether Mrs. Croker, you can tell us, but I believe that a season ticket for the tennis court for junior is it's it's twenty pounds not very much more than £20, have I got that figure right? Are you able to confirm that? Uh, yes, it's um, a household cost, so it would be 35 for the year, um, but for the whole household to use. So £35 to be able to book tennis courts and to be able to play, I think it's tremendous value. And again, I know and I'm always cognizant of the fact that there are some families where £35 is a lot, but you know, that, that is in many ways a bargain. If you try to pay tennis on any private tennis court, it will probably cost you five or six pounds just for one game, maybe more. Um, the AstroTurf, um, I'm delighted with the carbon savings that we're going to make. Um, it is, you know, when it's redone, it's a really good facility. It is usually well used. And obviously not having the lighting right now makes it um, unusual, usable, and we're also not getting the revenue into the town account. Um, I would, um, with Councillor Tippett Cooper though, ask that we look, always look at the cost, particularly of that astroturf for young people. And I know some of the issue for them wasn't just the cost, it was the fact 
that the technology which they would want to use to book the call they found inaccessible. So whether there is an ability to actually look at how we make it easier, can, can we have an app? So what they really want to do is tap on an app, see a slot, book it, pay for it, go into a website, you know, they find it all quite difficult, quite clumsy in this very technically driven smartphone world in which they live. Um, so if we could look at that. And just one final thing, I know the part plan as well, Councillor Kresk, one of the things we heard from the young people who, who were going into the Astro Court um, illegally was they just needed a, um, a football net. They needed some, some nets and posts and there weren't any more tools. So as part of the part plan, we are looking to provide uh, you know, those goalposts so they can for free go and have a kick back. So we have heard that, but it does again go back to, I agree with you, if we have a good strategy so it's accessible to all, it would still help. But I think our team supports particularly a really good value. Thank you. Thank you. Any further debate? If not, we'll look to the recommendations which are on page 23 that we approve the overall town budget in February. Sorry, subject to Cabinet and Council approval of the overall town budget. Um, we approve a budget and expenditure of £99,000 for the fencing and floodlighting improvement works required in 2021-2022 to be financed through SIL. Um, subject to any necessary approvals through the SIL process, we delegate authority to the Natural Environment and Recreation Team Manager to do the procurement work and appoint the relevant contractors to carry out work. And we approve a budget and expenditure of up to £150,000 in 2022-23 for the resurfacing of the tennis courts finance from internal borrowing. That agreed. 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 Lovely. Thank you. Thank you all for coming along tonight and presenting presenting this paper. We know it's such a, an important, two very important facilities for a very wide range of the community. Very young, very young children use these facilities and much older people use the facilities. They really do cater to everyone. So thank you for bringing them along. So we move now to the group verbal updates. And we're a little short on number here tonight. So um, Councillor Westwood, did you want to start with an update from the walking strategy group? Because we haven't heard from you for a wee while. Oh, no, thank you, Chair. In the walking strategy group. Right. Okay. Um, just to give an overview of the uh, Walker Strategy Group, because uh, I don't think it's been discussed since I've been a member of the council here, actually. So, this is something that has been ongoing for many years, predates me, and um, it's uh, probably seven or eight years it's been in existence. Um, and it is um, made up of people who have got interest in walking around the city. And I don't mean thinking about walking, I mean walking is a mode of transport if you like around the city. Um, people from Winnex, Ostrands, um, it's got uh, Winchester City Councillors, Hampshire County Councillors on it as well. So it's, it's a group of people that are interested in promoting walking as a mode of transport within this city area. And um, we also, you know, is with Cycle Winchester as well, because there's a lot of overlap and it's uh, what, what they've achieved to date is the, the walking strategy that uh, was produced some years ago has been adopted by both Winchester City Council and Hampshire County Council and is seen as a, which is seen as a, a leading community in terms of trying to drive forward walking uh, in this manner. So it's a, it's a great place. What hasn't happened, um, principally because of funding, um, is delivering some of that strategy and the, uh, the capability and improvements that will allow us to walk more easily and more safely around this city. And uh, so that, that's um, kind of where I stepped into probably about a year ago. So that, that's the background to the group where we are. And I'd imagine it's been quite frustrating over the last uh, few years for the members of that group. But 
where we sit now is that there is an opportunity to move forwards and uh, with um, with COVID and uh, with the uh, what we learned during that period, uh, the initial lockdowns and so on, we looked at the streets and uh, there was significantly more travel, a bicycle and uh, a walking so on people using the countryside. So there's much more awareness of this as a as money transport on the city. And uh, there's also been a, a level of central government support for this as well. So uh, they are uh, actively, we believe, supporting um, uh, active travel and active travel modes. And uh, so the focus of the group for the last, uh, I would say, six months or so has been around how can we take advantage of the potential funding through central government, through Hampshire County Council to implement and improve uh, walking capability facility, facilities, cycling facilities within the city. So the Winchester Movement Strategy and the local uh, cycling walking infrastructure uh, program um, is, is giving us an opportunity now to work actively and proactively both with the uh, transport uh, uh, planning offices both within Winchester City Council and within Hampshire County Council. So uh, what, we, what we are doing at the moment is uh, is um, reviewing the uh, consultation papers uh, from uh, movement strategy and the uh, walking cycling infrastructure project as well and providing our feedback. Uh, we're also um, uh, in discussion and in workshops with Hampshire transport planners and Winchester City transport planners in that process as well. Um, the feedback that we are putting together as a group is currently being uh, reviewed and uh, will be uh, fed back into the consultation period for movement strategy in the next week. And um, to, to give a flavour of what we're talking about, because Right, right back to the initial discussion we had on, on the 20 mile an hour um, uh, speed within the city. Cars are a real issue if you want to start trying to cycle and walk around the city. Can't do much about the hills, sadly, but e bikes do help with that. And a fundamental enabler is uh, implementation of elements of the movement strategy to free up space in this city for other modes of transport, whether it be public transport, cycling or walking. But we're in conjunction with the movement strategy, um, um, then there should be, assuming that movement strategy is taken forward in the way I envisage it, the opportunity to improve uh, many of the capabilities of walking and cycling in the city. Um, in terms of what we're seeing in the consultation papers, then we're seeing um, uh, probably too much of an engineering focus in those papers. I would like to see more of a, a network and, and um, really bring into life some of those strategy elements rather than delve, delve down into the, you know, the nuts and bolts of how you'll do a drop curve or a raised platform, whatever is there. And, uh, and also I think there's, there's, there's not quite the focus I would like to see in terms of linking up some of the key areas of the city, so it's all about 15 minutes. Uh, neighbourhoods linked up with the three main supermarket areas, linked up with the doctors, surgeries and hospitals, linked up with the top six or seven schools. So I think there's more work that needs to be done in actually providing a viable network around that city, a network that people would use rather than just to hub and spoke into the centre of the city. So there's a lot of feedback we're giving in those sorts of areas. Um, and uh, so from this point forward, we will provide our feedback in into the consultation. Uh, at the closure of the consultation, there will be a review of these documents that will be finally published by the uh, Council. And at that point, then we see us having a very active role in trying to secure the funding for really two, two things going forward. One is uh, picking off the strategic priority routes that we would like to see improved. So that may be from the station area down through the centre of the city out towards the uh, leisure centre as, as a uh, invested and working and pleasant walking route. 
but equally we need to pick off a lot of opportunistic areas. So as, as Councillor Lerny said, um, there's a lot of value in signage and there's a lot of value in paint. Um, as you walk around this city, I know there are shortcuts. I don't like walking on the main roads. I like walking on the roads that are parallel to the main roads. And we can do an awful lot uh, to promote um, active travel by uh, promoting, advertising, and making people aware of the, the time it takes to get from A to B and the pleasant ways to do that. But equally linked into the traffic, that's a really important point, said before in this meeting that the walking uh, paths in the city are um, that's a seg a segmented, you can't get from one part to another because you have to cross the road. So linking up some of those areas, there's opportunities for opportunistic and uh, tactical work to link up some of the uh, primary walking routes across the city, as, as well coming out as funding and forwards. So um, that's where we are at the moment. Uh, as a group, we're trying to uh, get the correct feedback, get the movement strategy and the LC with documents uh, enhanced in the way that we like to see them enhanced, um, and then um, positioning ourselves to use those documents to secure funding going forwards. Okay, so, no, really helpful. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Christ, did you want to give a quick update on the planning group? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, no, just wanted to. Thank you, Councillor Westwood, for that summary there. Um, just struck me a conversation I was having with my daughter last night, actually. She was talking about how her friends come in from out of town. Um, they go to college and she's lived in Winchester all her life and she knows the safe places to walk around. Um, so she acts as a guide to her friends that come in from out of town as to the safe routes around um, or the more pleasant routes around. So no, thank you for sharing that. Um, and thank you, Chair, for the opportunity to, to share what's been happening with the, the planning for the future of the town group. Um, I think building on uh, what Councillor Scott was talking about in terms of the good things the town forum has done, I think this is a group that has done some very good things. Um, in conjunction with great work that's happening in the council and with officers, I think. Mean, a couple of years ago, I might have taken issue with the planning department, perhaps. Um, but I think the changes within the planning department and the, and the collaboration that we've had with that group has been fantastic. I think mean, they've supported us very well, very well with the vision for Winchester. Um, and, that, and that's been our main focus, has been to work with that planning group um, and those planning officers. And, you know, they've just, that, that team's, just won more than at the end of last year. Uh, they won the South East Award, Award for Excellence in Plan Making Practice. Um, and they also won the overall South East winner um, with judges saying that their achievement was as a real planning success story. And I think we're working very well together. Um, and they have given me some bullet points they wished or were happy for me to, to talk about and to share. Um, so if you don't mind, Chair, I'll, I'll do that certainly. Um, I think the first thing they, the officers from the council agree that there is room for improvement in terms of how the new local plan needs to deal with design issues as well as how it considers Winchester Town and the wider district in order to ensure that we deliver high quality places. Um, and that's very much what this town forum group has been about. It's about getting that engagement, that recognition, that action. Um, and as I mentioned last time, what was done through the autumn was um, the commissioning of Design Southeast to run local plan design workshops, and there were three of those. One which was by invitation only to the public and private sector, which looked at the effectiveness of the local plan, the design policies, uh, and looked at gaps to fill those policies. Um, workshop two was for me. Uh, a real gem, a, a result we should be really proud of in terms of a chance for local people to have their say on where there might be opportunities to enhance the build in natural environments in terms of where and what those changes might be within the city town. There was a third one um, at the Marwell Hotel, which was open to communities from surrounding market towns and rural villages to have their say on design matters. 
um, with vigorous debate on what represented success in development and what integrated well with the character of existing places and wider settings. Um, so you can hear from that just the engagement and the discussion um, and the involvement of local people um, and local expertise, which again is something we've been championing for a while. Um, the next steps are with that feedback is that it's being finalised and will form part of local plan evidence based um, will be used to directly form the draft regulation 18 local plan, um, which is due to be consulted on in August and September. The, the reports from the workshops, um, I've seen them on the screen, I shared with them on Teams, where I've seen them coming out of the site and they are beyond expectations in terms of what I was expecting to be achieved. Um, and quite frankly, what the officers were expecting. Uh, Design Southeast themselves have been impressed with what they've been able to do and will be recommending the approach to other districts and, and, and councils as well. Um, those reports are going to be going to the Cabinet on the 17th of February, I understand, um, and then they'll be made available and people are invited and anyone else will be able to see those reports. Um, but it does, Chair, I think, get towards what we're looking for, which is very much a spatial plan for Winchester to look at the walking and cycling routes, how we get connectivity between different parts of the city, as well as which areas are due for regeneration and how they should be regenerated. And I think importantly, um, the Sheila sites or the sites within the town uh, as part of the, the Sheila um, are now available. There are a couple of sites within Winchester Town, um, so I encourage all councillors to take a look at that um, and how that might impact your wards. Obviously, a lot of where development might come through are within uh, council owned sites in terms of central Winchester or in station approach, perhaps. Um, so, less kind of private development, perhaps compared to uh, the broader district. Um, but certainly you know, where the group is heading, I think it's personally the direction I was hoping for. We don't have a governance structure. I think we get to Councillor Scott's report, we're not a parish. We don't have any governance authority around planning discussions and or decisions. But I've, I've always hoped that we would have and be seen as a social or an expert influencer in such matters. Um, and that's, I think, where we're starting to, to get to. Um, as an example, I'm grateful for the City of Winchester Trust, their outreach, and looking to that group to be a conduit with officers. Um, and I'm working on connecting officers with the City of Winchester Trust to uh, talk about their, their ambitions and, and their views and to get their views directly into that planning department. Um, so I think I think we're doing some good things there in that space. Certainly more to do. Um, I'm not told the planning was officers this, but what you know, we want to keep pushing them um, because the next phase I think is really to look at that detailed spatial plan and to look at where we can spend the seal money that we have um, so that we can get broader development on the infrastructure across the town. Um, and that's why I'm interested in terms of where is development taking place um, and where is it that we need and deserve to be spent looking at where we should be investing in infrastructure. Um, so that relates back to my first comment in the meeting, Chair. Um, so that's probably all I wanted to talk about. Um, but the other thing, I, if, if you indulge me a little bit, Chair, um, just something that came up this week is that uh, we've got the Jubilee happening. So a number of residents have been looking at uh, uh, Jubilee parties. And I just noticed that the, the deadline for applications for closing roads is on the 11th of March. So this might want to... Uh, Thank uh, you. A very good reminder. Thank you. I think it will be the first opportunity for lots of streets and community groups be able to get outside and see each other in a long time. So thank you for that. 
update and for that reminder. Councillor Lerner, you've got your hand up. Thank you. Um, Councillor Sidney Cooper has actually sent an, an email update on the Heritage Group. So if I, I briefly update you on his behalf. Thank um, you. He's risen from his sick bed to write to us all. So I think he deserves a, he deserves a hearing. Um, uh, with regards to Hyde Gate, uh, the pigeon proofing is nearly finished, uh, which I'm sure we'll all be pleased to hear. I certainly went through there recently and it's looking a lot better already. Uh, the next stage is uh, restoration works on the building itself um, and arrangements are being made with Historic England for a meeting there to get the required uh, consent for these works and also to discuss the possibilities of the wider public realm going forward. So we're looking at a meeting there. Uh, we're hoping that at the same time as Historic England come to have a look at Hyde Gate, we can get them to have a look at the Buttercross. Uh, we get a lot of flack about the Buttercross, but what people don't realise is that we're only allowed to clean the steps with a bit of distilled water. We are not allowed to clean the rest of the, the, rest of the Buttercross. Uh, which explains um, some of the state it's in. We've been trying to get um, Historic England to come and talk to us and give us permission. Well, even tell us what we what we should be doing and get permission for regular maintenance. So I know that's a project Councillor Westwood is going to take on as, as his personal quest to, to make sure that Historic England actually give us permission to, to make the Buttercross look as, as good as it deserves to. Uh, the uh, collapsed wall at Nun's Stream, um, we need a specialist consultant uh, to look at that. There are only 80 specialist cons conservation engineers in the country, uh, so this is something where you have to wait your turn until they're ready to come and have a look at it. But we do want to do the best job we possibly can on that wall um, and make sure it does get it does get restored in the best way. Um, we're looking at the, the content of the wall, as you might be aware, that it was built out of old stones and some of those stones may have historic value in their own right. But that's something that we need to to look at going forward. Uh, we've also been looking at uh, CCTV at Hyde Gate and whether that would help some of the antisocial behaviour there. Uh, so that's something that we'll be, we'll be looking at going forwards. Um, a few other bits and pieces. Uh, King Alfred needs wax. So uh, when you see the, the scaffolding going up around King Alfred, he's just getting a polish. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We won't get the kids with the crayons out. Um, uh, we've also had some cleanage of signs in the town, so thanks to the bid for doing that. Um, and we'll be looking at what we can do about cleaning more around the town um, and generally having a look at how we can get some more funding to spend on um, our local historic heritage. So I think that's most of it. Summary. Yeah, so that's a quick run through of the heritage groups work. Lovely. Thank you very much. Um, next group, I think so. What do you had? What? What do we had? We've had counts already, a paper from the counts already, a paper on north walls already. So I think we'll go to city centre and then I'll do a quick update on the outdoor swimming group and then we can move to the work program and discuss the paper. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Crust mentioned uh, the role of his group in working with officers, and, and that's quite a lot of what the city, uh, city centre group does, um, trying to provide a public voice uh, with uh, ongoing work programmes um, and monitoring and occasionally giving a little push. Uh, some of these areas have been uh, running a bit behind schedule, we know there's been some disappointment amongst the public regarding, for example, Morris's covered. And I wanted to give assurance that uh, that, that work, uh, the outstanding work, including the lighting uh, and the commissioning of a mural, uh, are 
on schedule will be happening this spring uh, and, and will uh, be very much welcomed. And, and I also understand uh, Councillor Green may have a particular interest in this, that the uh, proposal for a memorial plan Uh, also, the restoration of the flight, the flight, not the flight kaya, the kite flyer sculpture in Parchman Street, which is given to me for various um, very good reasons, uh, as expected to begin in March. More generally, though, uh, a lot of our conversations uh, are around the ongoing. Uh, need to keep the city looking as attractive for visitors as possible, the little details that make the difference. Uh, we were very pleased to hear the responsibility for the routine maintenance of street furniture and, and the like is uh, passing to a special maintenance team, which does fantastic work, uh, and also the loose additional staffing res uh, resource available uh, in 2020. Two, three, uh, onwards. But it's not just the routine stuff, um, and it's not just with the council. Um, the city group has been involved with a number of other partner organisations. For example, um, Councillor Ratcliffe and I, on behalf of the group and and also our board, uh, had a very productive meeting with the manager of the Christmas fair at. Uh, at the cathedral. Uh, we wanted to ensure that it was happening in a COVID safe way, but also in a way that would work for nearby residents uh, that, uh, that felt uh, sometimes a bit neglected when hordes of happy people use their streets to, to access the Christmas fair. Uh, that was all very productive and, and actually went on to a slightly longer term discussion about the need for the movement strategy and particularly the parking and the park and ride facilities in the city to be able to cope not just with the daily routine but also the peaks as well peaks of visitor interest that we hope will be more and more frequent as as Winchester pulls out of, of the last two years of its problems. Uh, on that on that note, uh, we might uh, we might say that we're very pleased to see the uh, the bid visitor perception survey done last summer. Lots of things that could be improved, but also lots of evidence that the uh, city and and its traders and uh, and uh, hospitality section are getting a lot right. Uh, and also that. Although it has been tough on the high street, we still read uh, in the papers and we hear talk of the, the great difficulties that the traders are still suffering, uh, and particularly in certain sectors. Nonetheless, retail vacancies uh, in terms of shop spaces in, in uh, Winchester High Street, which is defined, is currently less than 5%, uh, and we should be pleased, I think, in everyone's efforts and uh, what well, that hopefully tells us about, about a better 2022. On the final note, just working with partners, I'd like to commend the Council's uh, work on lights of the city, the installation of lights and projections between the Great Hall and the Abbey Gardens, which are uh, switch on this Saturday and will run until the 6th of February. Yeah, I've got the dates right. Great, thank you. Uh, it's, it's led by the Council, but with, with BID, Cultural Trust, the Cathedral, and other partners. And it's a really, uh, I think, um, positive way uh, of encouraging people to return to a secure and safe city centre. And I, I commend it to your enjoyment. Yeah. Sorry, how's it been? Very good of you to tell us about the lights being switched on. What time is that? Remember time? I 
would defer to the experts. Uh, thank you, Councillor. <coughs> it's going to start with a switch on a uh, sort of photo opportunity at six o'clock in Abbey Gardens, and then it will sort of almost progress up the high street, each uh, location getting switched on. We can't do it all in one go. Unfortunately, we have to go around and manually turn them on. So that will sort of work its way up to the great wall and then at the next hour from six o'clock. Thank you. And just a very quick update from the outdoor swimming group. We have we have met, we have um, set terms of reference, we have started to invite um, bodies to come and speak to us. And I'm pleased to say that the Lado group has today accepted an invitation to come and talk to us. So we will have that meeting shortly. <laughs> so move unless there are any other updates, we'll move to the work programme and we should have a paper from Councillor Radcliffe regarding um, St John's Hill. So over to you, Councillor Radcliffe. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I, I asked for a slot on the agenda this evening to speak about uh, the need for a new path plan for St John's Hill Park. And hopefully you will have seen the formal paper on the topic that was circulated by email last week, which contains more background and some photographs, some of which I have not managed to photograph. Um, St Giles Hill Park is a great asset, not just for residents living in nearby St Giles Hill and in Winnell and in Highcliffe, which are also very close by, but for people right across the city and, and their dogs for that matter. It's also a magnet for visitors, many of whom make the trek up the hill to see the sunset. I think few city parks in Britain offer a panoramic view to rival the one you get from the St Giles Hill viewpoint, taking in as it does one of the great medieval cathedrals of Europe, the College, the Guildhall, the Great Hall, the High Street and much of the city centre. And without being too corny, I've always thought that St Giles Hill Park was one of the jewels in Winchester's crown, albeit one that has lost some of its luster over the years. And I say that because sadly, the park has been in a state of decline really for several decades now. Trees and shrubs have become in places completely overgrown. Undergrowth is rampant. Views to the west and to the south have largely been filled in by self-setting trees and scrub. Many of the pathways are degraded, like the railings rusty, bent and broken. Steps and muddy, unpaved sections of pathway make much of the park inaccessible for anyone on a mobility scooter or power chair, as well as for parents with bush chairs. And none of this, I hasten to add, is any reflection on our amazing City Council officers who worked incredibly hard within ridiculously limited budgets to prevent the park sliding into an even worse state. Despite all of the challenges, they've somehow managed to keep the grass cut, carry out urgent repairs, clear undergrowth on one of the lower slopes, and create recently designated areas for wild grasses and wildflowers. That's all positive, but even so, the park remains overall in poor condition, and we need a plan to fix it. And as it happens, council officers are anyway due to start working on a new five-year park management plan for St Giles. The previous five-year plan only ran until 2020, and currently there's nothing in its place. Mm -hmm. Having spoken with many residents over the last 12 months and with officers, and with special thanks due to Coral Rogers, who I think is joining us online, and to Sue Croker, who's here, I'd like to propose that we raise the level of ambition for the new park plan. Our aim this time around, I think, should be not just to halt the park's decline, but to restore it, to open up the views, to expand access and to improve biodiversity. The paper that was circulated by email contains some ideas for possible inclusion in the new park plan based on conversations with many residents. Among them, resurfacing many of the pathways and creating a new hard surface, stair-free route linking the top and bottom of the path. Carrying out an audit of all railings, benches and bins and repairing, repainting and replacing items as needed. And some limited selective tree removal to restore the views, the historic views to the west across the city and to the south out to St Catherine's Hill. 
from, uh, from the southern end of the park, the big grassy open area at the top of the park. And finally, clearing uh, as much of the scrub and undergrowth on the slopes as we can, and planting native shrubs, grasses and wildflowers there. Now, the new park plan should, of course, tie in with the new district-wide tree management strategy, as well as with our biodiversity strategy. And whatever proposals we settle, the draft plan should and would be subject to public consultation so that local people and others who use the park can all give their views. I know from knocking on doors how much local residents care about this park. Some have said they'd love to volunteer to help maintain it in future, if only the council were to take on the heavy lifting, both literal and metaphorical. A restoration scheme will require funding, of course. Upkeep of the park is, I understand, paid for currently from the district budget, not from the town forum. Although I think there's a strong case for the town forum to make a contribution towards improvement. And I think we can and should be looking for SIL funding and possibly also funding from central government to fund these improvements. As we've seen in the case of North Walls, having a strategic plan with shovel ready projects means we'll be better placed to tap funding as opportunities arise. Given the park's importance for residents, its contribution to community health and well-being, and its great value as a visitor attraction for Winchester and the district, I think it will be money well spent. In the paper that was circulated, Jay, you'll see I suggested some recommendations for the town and forum, which you may wish to use or adapt depending on members' views. And I think we also have with us uh, a local resident uh, who uh, is keen to also say something, uh, who's also played a very important role in trying to save this park from sliding into uh, an even worse state. So we're grateful that he's come to join us today as well. Um, and our officer colleagues who are here may also wish to, to add something before we get to any decision point. Thank you. Thank you. Very smoothly done. Mr. Wright, do you want to? Uh, Thank you for coming along. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm Jeff Wright. Uh, I live on St. Giles Hill and I'm a, 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 a committee member of the Residents Association. Uh, and I start from a position, I, because I, uh, uh, Councillor Ratcliffe has shown me a, a draft of his paper. So I strongly support every work that he's got in there, but there are just a few things that I would like to add. And uh, this is because for the last six or so years, or sorry, for six, for six or so years, I was a coordinator of a volunteer group that was doing what I call rough gardening, uh, which was really about clearing scrub and replacing the cleared areas with, with native shrubs and opening up light so that some of the flowers and so on um, regenerated. Um, uh, in, now, in those years, we made significant progress uh, clearing the undergrowth, replacing, as which I've said, sorry, the work plan for this activity was generated in discussion with council officers led by Sue uh, in the Landscapes and Open Spaces team and uh, formed the management plan for 2015 to 22. It was teamwork at its best. Unfortunately, this activity was suspended three years ago when I was unable to resolve with the council concerns over liability issues for volunteers, following a decision, as I understand it, following a decision made by the legal department of the council. Since then, most of the areas that we have worked on have reverted to scrub. It's a huge shame as everyone is losing. The volunteers enjoyed the activity, residents and passers-by appreciated the improved appearance, and the council benefited from significant free labour. The scope of improvement that Councillor Radcliffe is presenting is more ambitious than the scope we volunteers were engaged on and will require more professional input and machinery and equipment. That will, of course, require funding. However, the rough gardening that I've described 
that we were undertaking will be necessary to continue to improve biodiversity. And this is very labour intensive. I believe that for this proposal to fly, it will be essential to reactivate a volunteer group as the cost of paid labour would inhibit how much, if any, could be achieved. I therefore ask councillors to revisit the decision on volunteer engagement that currently places all responsibility on volunteers to establish their necessary liability mitigation. After all, the council has officers who are well versed in legal, health and safety, HR and insurance matters as necessarily applies to employees that should be easily extended to volunteers at minimal cost. I know of several councils and charitable organisations that operate volunteer schemes, allowing volunteers to work without worrying about liabilities. Councillor Radcliffe's proposal is just what is needed to bring the park back to its original splendour. But for best results, it will require the council to implement a volunteer friendly policy. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming along tonight. Um, does anyone want to respond on, on the issues that Mr. Wright has raised? Otherwise, we can check that with the legal department and come back to you on the liability <laughs> issues. Um, but in general, on Councillor Radcliffe's paper, do we have any questions or comment? Councillor Looney. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I do think you need to recognise that the council is very stretched in terms of um, the workload that we've got on at the moment. So that is something that we'll have to consider when taking uh, these kind of proposals forward. Um, I certainly welcome a fresh look at the park and I certainly think those issues around things like railings and steps and all the rest of it um, are something that we should take a hand sooner rather than later, and particularly if that involves an improvement in access for people. I see no reason why we couldn't use SIL funding uh, to pay for some of that. Um, I think the um, I've thought quite deeply about this paper, and I think there, there will be some issues that come up around um, thinking about uh, particularly about what biodiversity looks like um, and recently I was asked on another site in the town to not remove the brambles uh, because of their benefits for biodiversity and I think it's important that any plan does leave some scrappy bits you know, and that we're clear a bit like we have with the North Walls Park Plan around having those zones maybe where, but be giving people a clear idea of what is meant to be wilderness and what's meant to be nicely looked after, if you like. Um, I think we do need to take up the point about volunteering. Um, I know there are volunteers doing some of this work elsewhere um, in the town. And I think we need to look about what kind of structures they're doing it under. Um, um, obviously, the management plan does need to be refreshed, um, but I think we need to be clear that this isn't a, a whole North Wall style plan, because actually the function of the park, I think people are generally quite happy with this place where people go to walk, to, to enjoy being out in the open air with trees and uh, plants around them, um, rather than it being a place where a lot of different activities take place. I think those views are important. Um, I've certainly been to some amazing gardens. I don't know if any of you have been to the, the Rigo Terrace up in Yorkshire, where one of the ways the garden operates is essentially wooded areas, but with clear parts through them where suddenly you have these magnificent views of scenery. So we don't necessarily need to provide the expansive views that we had in the past. Potentially, there's a better result to be gained by glimpses. Um, and I think one thing we should highlight is that we do, we are going to have the issue of ash dieback in that area, which will lead to a 
need for significant tree works and a significant removal of trees. Um, and there may be some opportunities there. But as I say, I, my main wariness about this is about the need to not overload officers. And I think we need to take this away and look about how we can manage this in the most effective way uh, to see the kind of results we want. Uh, but um, certainly welcome the, welcome the prospect of improving that area. Thank you. Before we move on to other members' questions, I just wondered if um, Mrs. Croker wanted to respond to the paper because um, she may be able to answer in advance any questions that people have about officer capacity. Thank you very much, Chair. Yes, obviously it's a concern to us. It's important that we are able to deliver the commitments that we make to the residents. And we've already got a number of uh, projects on the go, including the North Water Park Plan, and it's essential that we are able to deliver those. In terms of St Giles Hill, I welcome the, uh, the input from the councillor. It is a wonderful site and very important to us, and that is why we have managed the site for the best of our abilities in recent years, uh, in line with what was required at the site. It's disappointing the management plan ran out in 2020, but there's obviously reasons why we weren't able to update that uh, as quickly as we would have liked. We have got a, an action in the Biodiversity Action Plan for this year to update that management plan for the site. And I take on board the comments about the access uh, and particularly uh, because the location of the site, the topography of the site, there's always going to be issues. And if we can find any way to minimise those and to improve access, that would be, would be wonderful. But it is going to be quite a project. Um, we'll need engineering input, obviously we'll need funding, etc. So I don't know how we would deliver that. Um, yes, there is an issue with ash dieback. The tree strategy is coming through, and that's something I would ask members to have a look at when they're able to to make comment because that will provide some of the, the work that we can look at for trees. Um, but I think there will be some work up there, and we need to be managing that prior to doing anything um, else, really. And I did, would just mention about the volunteers. I am very grateful um, on behalf of the council for everything that group has done. And it is obviously deeply disappointing that we've not been able to support the group uh, working up there. We have had numerous conversations about how we can try and move it forward. And there is an opportunity, but it needs a group to take on a certain role. I'd hoped that the Residents Association might have been willing to do that, but Jeff has informed me tonight that they're not. So um, we're back to where we were in that we need that group to take on that role to support personal liability. That's what the concern is. There is insurance to cover volunteers. But it's that personal liability. Um, so I really do hope that we can find something because the work volunteers can do up there is those extra bits, that care and attention that is so wonderful to have that obviously it's very difficult to deliver through a larger scale contract. I wasn't necessarily going to say more than that, but um, thank you for bringing it in. Thank you. No, that, that's really, really helpful. Um, so I've got Councillor Scott, Councillor Edwards, Councillor Green and Councillor Cresk. Uh, thank, thank you, Chair. Um, do you want to go first? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Cliff, you've done a, a brilliant paper here, and, and what I see straight away is striking. Whether we can provide it now, Never, whatever. But what Councillor Radcliffe's done here is engaged the community and put a finger on something which is not quite right in, in our city. And to know it's a spectacular uh, viewpoint, we used to host uh, many Japanese students and uh, Spanish students. And one of the two weeks or four weeks, or whatever, one of the key things we always took them to was this viewpoint at St Joseph's Hill. Quite often we used to march up the stairs to get there. By the time I got there, I was absolutely gasping for fresh air, but um, so it's a, it's a, amazing what you've done. And I know it's a frustrating thing because we've had many great action days with Sue's teams uh, and with other sort of uh, groups who've taken on the insurance. I know that's a, a key frustrating factor. Uh, when you do work days or, or something like that. But I know that the sense of bringing community together, uh, a bit of sweat and toll is, is an amazing fresh air, is a great thing to do. I hope we can resolve that. I'm just wondering if your near neighbours, if, if there's no one within the St Giles' community, whether Hyde Forum or something like that, or maybe the All Saints, 
um, school or something quite near to you who have got insurance, maybe you may be able to uh, somehow tap into to the, the near neighbourhood, which is quite an establishment, so that because needs to be released to neighbourhood. A service uh, worker for I can put on this down. And so I used to have a lot of dealings with all saints uh, at that time. And maybe it could be something that could be tapped into, which will give you the credence that you will need to give that insurance out so you can get back out there uh, and work it. Um, I do think uh, that uh, there is sensitivity of what the experts will say and uh, what should and what should be taken out and something like that. So I'm sure that your team would work quite closely and has worked quite closely with Sue's team and so forth the experts who will bring that biodiversity and get that key right. And that will be a, a spectacular thing. But Councillor Ratcliffe, absolutely fantastic what you brought to the town form tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Scott. Councillor Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to say how impressive and inspiring I found this paper. Um, I think it really is an ambitious project um, and has so many diverse benefits, biodiversity being one of them, but also general health, community engagement, um, and also tourism and something about this project, um, I think, needs a bit of a bit more inflation. I mean, it's entirely understandable that we are discussing this and already seeing uh, the size of, you know, we take a breath, the financial implications, the the many the many problems um, that, that it might. Uh, that it might challenge us with if we were to try and deliver it. But, but let's not lose sight of the opportunity here. I can't help thinking that if only St Giles Hill had been another 50 metres taller, the Victorians would have built a funicular of it. <laughs> and, and there would be a panoramic view, perhaps with a nice cafe. Because when you go up there, and if you imagine it without all the overgrowth that uh, that has been um, you know, sprouting in recent years. It gives you a sense of the topography of the city, not just as it is now, but its history. You can see without needing a VR headset, you can see exactly where the, the medieval city, the Roman walls, the, the cathedral and so on lay. And I think it's long term uh, ambition, or my long term ambition, would be, of course, to do all the improvements that uh, the Councillor Ratcliffe has set out in the paper, subject to funding and legal constraints and so on, if we possibly can. But maybe just to keep a bit of space uh, for something even more ambitious that would be a huge attraction for people when they visit our city uh, to be able to to comprehend its history in in one blink and, and to find a bit of uh, a bit of uh, quiet when they've done too much shopping. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, I told you how much I love a furniture. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Green. Chairman, thank you. Um, I just found this rather nice photograph actually taken on St Giles' Hill of the city <laughs> on which it picks. Um, the only problem of having two more councils in the ward, one normally seems to get in before the other one. I mean, he always takes everything I wanted to say before I could say it. So there we go, thank you. But just a bit of information for Councillor Scott. Now that he's getting older, the same as I am, and a lot of us are, there is actually an access to St Giles' Hill yeah. on the top of Quarry Road. So, you know, if you ever want to go up there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try it. Yeah, well, it's easier. Um, but no, I, I totally thank um, Councillor Radcliffe for his paper. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, and I hope it goes a long way. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Radcliffe, there's no other comment. I would like to thank you for bringing this. Oh, Councillor Press, sorry, I did have you on my list. 
Thanks for the opportunity to speak because I am excited but also frustrated that this is before us and that we're hearing um sorry I forget your name. Um thank you, Mr. White. Uh, Mr. White's issues from that. The vision for Winchester was about empowering residents to make their lives better, to make Winchester better. We've been talking about this for years, it's almost for months, about empowering residents. And for us to stop residents just seems ridiculous. This is what we were supposed to do. And this, for me, this is a one great win. This is empowering residents to make Winchester great, to create the Winchester that they want to live in. Why, why was not the first thing we were looking at is, is the legal mechanisms to empower people to do what they want to do? Where's all the work we did with the Bishop of Winchester? Where's the work that we did, or where's the work that we approved two town forums ago to get officer training, and to get officers thinking about how to enact the vision? This should be on the on the inventory of activities to do, and we should be focusing on empowering people to do this kind of thing. And I see the vision for Winchester implementation update in the work program, and I'd like to see how this can be delivered as part of that program. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Robbins is here tonight, so I think we can we can take that forward and take that away because that is a, a very good point. Councillor Ferguson. Um, thank you, Chair. I'll be brief. Um, and actually, Mr. Crass, thank you for talking about that empowering element. That was point, one point I was going to make. Um, Professor Reichlich, thank you for bringing this paper. I love St. John's Hill. Um, I like it because it is a hill. It's good for me to have to walk up the steps. Um, but as someone who's broken an ankle twice the same ankle, I do worry about the state of the past. And I do worry about trip, people tripping on them. Um, the views at the top are, you know, are great. You can see through the trees. And your points, um, Chris, I've got your surname. That's terrible because your name's not here. <laughs> 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 <At> Councillor Edwards. <laughs> um, um, you know, your points about seeing the topography of the town are also important. I know one of the appeals about the city for tourists and one of the things that makes Winchester unique is because we are surrounded by greenery, because we have the hills we go down. In fact, the city is hidden from many of our hills because of the, the trees and the topography. Um, so I would say if we can invest, and I know there are resources, resource issues, particularly officer resource issues um, in the National Environment Team, and I'm a standard um, Mr. Croak, the amount your team do get done, given the amount of resources that you have. Um, I think that maybe we could be looking to say, well, why does it all fall to the natural environment team? Is there a more creative way of looking at other officer resources, perhaps in, in other teams, to support something like this? So it's really a challenge for offices, you know, senior management, to say, Rather than just saying that the full touch environment is the more co working that could be done with something of this nature. So that's what I want to Thank you. Thank you. Another good point. We do have senior management here as, as well, so we can take that away. Um, I would also like to thank Councillor Radcliffe for bringing this to Town Forum. I think it's a fantastic initiative to bring things like this to Town Forum so we can discuss them, not have everything officer led, but member led, because we have such direct connection to the communities that we represent. Um, I completely agree with the accessibility issues. I have pushed a buggy up St Giles Hill many, many times and it is a very good workout. And there are some areas where you just can't go with a buggy without either going off the steps and having to go up on the, the grass areas or just lifting it up with my husband and, and carrying it. So it's accessibility is a really important issue. I also live probably at the bottom of St Giles Hill and it's a great peace to me being able to look out of my kitchen window and see the trees and see the green space. I think we need to view the hills, not just of views down, but also the views up 
towards the hill and that view of the hill has changed over the years. It used to be a very grassed hill, it now is a very tree covered hill. So we need to just think about those again from the vision work. We know that one of the things that people valued in the town more than anything was not necessarily the old buildings and the views of old buildings, it was the views to the outside space from the town, that feeling that you were, yes, you were in town, but yes, you were also surrounded by beautiful countryside. And although it is a, it's an urban hill, effectively, it still has that feel of countryside and that open feel. So I think from what I've heard, we are agreed that we would like to see work on this plan pushed, pushed forward and added to the work plan for, I'm not going to say March, um, the 2022-2023 work year. Um, so we have time to think about and think about what we have capacity to do, not just in your team, Mrs Koroka, but across the council. Perhaps we can bring in the tourism officers and others um, as well. So with that, if we turn to the work plan for the, for the year, we only have one meeting left on 17th of March. Um, so can we agree the work programme adding in um, work on St Giles Hill for the, for the next Agreed. 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 Lovely. Thank you all. It's been nine o'clock on the dot, so it is a bit longer than usual. So thank you to everyone for coming along tonight. Um, thank you to the members of the public. You are all still here, which is admirable. Thank you very much. Um, have a good evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.